Welcome to the Elite BSC Podcast, where our entire focus is helping commercial janitorial contractors succeed. You want a growing company, a thriving team, and healthy profits, and we are here to help. My name is Jordan Tong. I'm the founder of Elite BSC, a company dedicated to helping janitorial companies grow and thrive. I also serve as CEO and one of the owners of France Building Services. France is a janitorial company employing nearly 600 people. Since 2007, we grew from 1.5 million to more than 20 million in annual revenue and built what I think is one of the best teams in the world. The goal of Elite BSC in this podcast is to give owners in the industry a vision of where their company can be and the information and tools to get there. I want to share what I have learned over the years to make this a reality for you. Hey, welcome to the Elite BSC Podcast. I'm Jordan Tong, your host. So today we're going to dive into something that some people enjoy doing, and but most of us normal people do not enjoy doing, and that is cold calling. Um, when I I say cold calling, or you we we think about the term cold calling, it it immediately drums up images of telemarketers calling and annoying you, and this happens. You know, it used to happen when we, back for us old people, when we had phone lines at our house, you would sometimes get people that would call like during dinner time and uh, interrupt and want to try to sell you something. And now, at least in the last few years, it seems like those types of calls have accelerated on cell phones. And so you're getting spam calls all the time. And so cold calling just, it has, it has sort of a bad rap. And it's unfortunate because it's certain people in the marketing world that that give it a bad rap. But but it is a necessary component. So in the last few podcasts, we've been we've been sort of walking through the sales process, or, or really more more the marketing process of how do we go about finding prospects and identifying them and getting contact information, um, getting on bid lists, you know, that sort of thing. How, how do we grow our business? So we, we've talked a little bit about developing an ideal client profile. That was in one of the episodes we've talked about um, building a list and actually how you go about doing that. So let, let's assume that we have put in the effort and the time to build a prospect list. So we've, we've gone to, maybe we've downloaded some lists, purchased some lists. We've gone out and used some research tools to find more prospects that meet our criteria. We've done some Google research and used maps. And and now we're trying to find contact data. Now, or, or and maybe you found a little bit of contact data, but it's it's often difficult to find who the right person is in a facility. And, and this is where the, the cold calling comes into play. So imagine you've got a list of, let's say, you know, 500 companies that you're like, I, I would do business with them. We, we would love to have their facility. Now, what we want to do in the cold calling process, and, and I want to I make this to where it's less intimidating than, than really, it, it, it doesn't need to be very intimidating. So I, I have a modest proposal. When I think about trying to cold call, what I want to do is, is I want it, because I mean, I enjoy selling, but the process of cold calling is even stressful for me. And it's mostly because I don't want to interrupt someone's day and be an annoyance to someone and have to do that repeatedly. And so what I'm trying to do on my first cold call, and this is, this would be a true cold call, hopefully we can get some more warm calls later on down the road, is I just want to answer a few basic questions on this first call. So I've got a company name. And I may or may not have some contact info, um, and that's sort of irrelevant. That just is going to maybe help who the first person you're going to talk to and ask some of these questions are. So what, the things that I'm trying to figure out is, is essentially it's like three questions. So I want to know, do they outsource? Um, who the decision maker is uh, or someone involved in the decision making process? And I want to know when they plan to bid out their services again. So what's what's good about these questions is it's it's fairly easy to get answers to these, especially the first two questions. Um, but all these questions, none of them are invasive. None of them even really are salesy. Um, they're pretty, you know, they're not invasive 
high pressure kinds of questions. You're not asking for an opportunity to come out and talk to them. You're not asking them, are they happy with their service or anything of that sort. So I am from the South. You know, I live in Kentucky. I've lived in Tennessee before. And so our approach down here as, as a general rule is um, you, you have to be nice on the phone. And so what, what I'm going to do on a call like that, so let's say I, I call an organization, let's say it's a medical practice, and I get someone on the phone. Um, the, the first question I'm going to ask is, you know, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Jordan Tong. I'm with France Building Services. Um, I may not have the right person, but I'm looking to find out who oversees the janitorial services there, who handles the contracts related to the cleaning services. So it's a pretty non-invasive question. Um, you're just trying to get some info about who that is. Who, who do I need to talk to? Um, who would I reach out to? Often you will get a name. Like that's very rarely you're going to get turned down on that particular question. Um, and and once I get a name, I may ask. What my preference is to just to ask the person I'm talking to that has given me that that name a couple other questions, or at least one other question, is I want to know that person's contact info. So, hey, I'd love to send them some information. Would you happen to have their email address, or is there a direct line that, that I should call to to speak with them? Hopefully you can get a little bit more information. Ideally, an email address would, would be great, because then you could follow up with an email to the right person. Okay, so we have who the decision maker is. And we have a couple other questions we, we want to know is do they outsource? Now this is, you could ask this one to the person um, that you're talking to. It's a pretty easy question to answer. Like, hey, do, do you guys outsource your janitorial services? Yeah, we do. Or no, we don't. We do that in-house. So it's another way to get the answer to that question. Now the last question that I want to get an answer to is when is the bid date? Um, when do you When do you plan on bidding out these services? The person you're talking to, if they're not the decision maker, they likely aren't going to know the answer to this question. Um, so if you are able to get on the phone with the person who is the decision maker, um, and this could be in a subsequent phone call if, if necessary, is you want to find out the status of the contract. When did they bid out again? Now, the reason I, I say this question, you're going to often get a lot of, I don't know, we don't have any sort of schedule for that. You're going to have some people that say we bid it out every year, every two years, every three years. And again, my non-invasive approach is, hey, I would love to stay in touch with you, and but I don't want to bug you on an ongoing basis. Now, when would be a good time for me to reach back out again? So knowing when they bid out again, would let them would would give you the opportunity to say how about I call if you're going to bid out next you know next February which is a year from now when I'm recording this um, then how about I reach out to you in December to to make sure we're still eligible to bid on the account for you guys and so that that's the way that I, I would want to approach it so now I know if I've got the answer to that now I know who the decision maker is I've got some of their contact info I know that they outsource and I know when they're going to bid the account again. And which is really valuable information. So imagine you have a list of 500 names, um, and let's say you can find this information for 300 of them. You got decision maker name and contact information. You know they outsource, and you know when they're going to at least begin exploring bidding out their services again. Man, that list is golden. Because what that gives for you is every month you have a small number of people to know I need to focus on reaching out to this group of people in order to try to sell. Um, and again, keeping in mind the janitorial sales cycle on the commercial side is a very long sales cycle and sometimes can be one, two, three plus years. Um, we've, <laughs> we've been through several cycles and we land the job, you know, six, seven years after we initially started pursuing that particular customer. So that being said, one, one question that can, that can come up along the way here, um, well, two, let's, let's answer two objections. So the first one is someone may say, Hey, I don't know when we're going to do this again. We're happy right now. Now that puts you in this awkward spot. They're happy. You don't want to start picking at them to be like, hey, I, I can give you a, a free quote or um, just in case something ever goes wrong, how about you give me an opportunity to come meet with you? So I don't necessarily want to do that. So my goal in the marketing process is to 
position myself as a credible, trustworthy, reliable source that when the need arises, I'm next in line. So that's the position that I want to be in when I'm talking with these prospects. So let's say you do get that response of, hey, I don't know when we're going to do this again. And we're pretty happy. So the follow-up question to that for me is, I just want to know when would it, when would be a good time for me to reach back out to them. So I want their permission of when to call back and make sure everything is still the same or whether or not we have an opportunity to maybe open some doors together and talk about this. So, you know, I may say, hey, would it be okay? When would be a good time for me to reach back out to you and and just have a follow-up conversation? Um, or you could even suggest a time. Would it be okay if I tried back, you know, you sort of gauge where they're at. Uh, would it be okay if I reach back out to you in six months or nine months or this time next year? You know, what, whatever it is. And that gives you a permission slip. It's just no longer a cold call anymore. You've got permission now to reach back out to this person. You don't know if it's going to actually have a contract bid date yet, but, but you know that's a possibility. Um, and then you can, we love to do email marketing campaigns along the way as sort of a soft approach. So what, what we often will do on a call like this is just say, hey, we are, we're going to be sending out some information uh, periodically, would it be okay if we um, sent some stuff to you occasionally? And we typically almost always get a, yeah, sure, that'd be fine. So the next objection you might have is, all right, so many of these places I call um, do not have someone answering the phone. And I've got this, you know, directory and I've got to start trying to sort through to figure out, you know, who do I get in touch with or whatever. So... On this, what all I need, in, at least in this introductory call, this this data gathering call, is I just need to talk with somebody. Like it doesn't to me, it doesn't matter if I can get a live person on the phone, and particularly someone that's friendly, and actually someone who is not does not have a vested interest in it is often more willing to give you information. So you know you don't want someone that's really closed lipped and feel like oh I can't I can't say anything. So what I will often do if I can't get through, you know, I'm, zero is often a way to get to an operator. So sometimes you've got that option. Um, some companies will give you the, you know, press one for sales, press two for HR. If you're an existing employee, press three. So I often will try to go to HR because they usually know everyone in the organization. Um, sometimes I'll press the button that I'm an employee just so I can get on with somebody there. Um, and again, whoever it is, whoever I can get to answer the phone, usually they can get me at least some of the information I need and then point me in the right direction of where I need to go from there. So let's assume that you say, all right, Jordan, I get it. This stuff is priority. Um, we should be doing it. And I, I assure you, you need to be doing this. Um, I don't think there's any way around using calls to gather some level of information to help push push the sales process along. And so you know you need it, but many of you are business owners and you're responsible for selling in your organization. And this often gets pushed to the back burner because you've got a lot of other urgent tasks going on. So my recommendation to you would be if you want to do this, to make room for it, to make time for it, I would you know set out a block of time that I'm that I might call two hours a week, one hour a week. I mean, this, even if you can just you commit to something to be regular and have cons some consistency here and you'll start to, you know, to reap some rewards on that. There's also the option of outsourcing. Um, you know, there are companies that serve our industry for telemarketing. They are pretty expensive. Um, I don't know of anybody that charges less than, I don't know, 1200 bucks a month or something like that to make cold calls. That's at the bare minimum. I know other people are paying three and $4,000 a month to have cold calling done for them. But that is an option. You can also look at places like Upwork and maybe find an individual to do that. Uh, we have hired someone part-time to come do that at our organization. We've got a little bit more control over what that process looks like. Um, but either way, I would make it a priority, and it doesn't have to be an expensive or time-consuming priority, but it does need to be a priority, and it will help in the long run increase the amount of bid opportunities that your organization gets, which ultimately and ideally leads to more sales. So 
I know this is this is a lot, and it's really this has been a pretty high level look at cold calling and gathering some of that information that you need. If you go over to our website, elitebsc.com, and you you go to the blog, you can select the sales category. And we've written a bunch of articles over the years on cold calling and, and some of this data gathering phase. And you should be able to find some some additional resources and information and help, even some cold calling scripts that we've used that that may be helpful in the process. So uh, head over there to Elite BSC and check that out, and uh, we'll see you next time. If you found the information in this podcast helpful, please like and subscribe on whatever podcast platform that you're using. If you would like more resources or help to grow your cleaning company, head over to EliteBSC.com. We have loads of articles, videos, free tools, coaching options, and a lot more. If your company is greater than 500K in revenue and you want to take your learning experience to the next level, check out our mastermind group. You can learn more about that at elitebsc.com slash mastermind.